Yeah, right. there will be Arthur Hennick has practiced journalism and has been a public relations professional for 40 years. His son, Ian, an autistic person now 34, graduated from a two-year community college in Connecticut and works at an assisted living facility in Florida. It is my great pleasure to welcome longtime friends of Special Olympics Connecticut, Arthur and Ian Hennick. Take it away. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. So we try to organize. So we actually wrote out an outline for our little talk today with all great global ambassadors. Uh, and I'll just. Can you see me now? Nope, we're having a little trouble seeing you and hearing you, Arthur. Yeah, I, I can't see him either. Me here, Okay, hang on. Let me see. Oh, we see you now. Okay, great. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay, well. okay. good. Then. There you go. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this technology thing can be baffling. <laughs> very puzzling. So we've prepared a little outline for our talk to you great global ambassadors just to stay organized. So the first thing we're gonna do is introduce ourselves just to give you a little background about who we are. I'll go first, then Ian will go next. Right. And he'll you know talk a bit about himself. And then we're gonna take a tour of Ian's uh, room here in our condo, we live together uh, with Ian and his mom, my wife, Sharon. And uh, then Ian and I are gonna chat together, talk about some of our favorite things. Ian's gonna talk about growing up and things that happened to him along the way. And then we're gonna leave plenty of time for your questions and answers. Uh, Whatever you have, we'll be happy to entertain them. That are in the end of our presentation. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. At, All right. At the end. Yep. So first, I'll talk about myself. I was born and raised in Queens, New York City, and uh, came from a family of uh, five people: mom, dad, older brother, younger sister, and we grew up in a three-bedroom apartment in Western Queens overlooking the Manhattan skyline. Uh, and uh, I went to public schools and uh, graduated from a, a magnet public high school in Manhattan. I took the subway every day to uh, the school. And uh, sometimes I studied on the subway even though it was loud. Sometimes I read the newspaper. Sometimes I might have even caught up on my sleep on the subway. It takes a, a kind of a neat trick to fall asleep on the subway. But if you get into the way the train and the car rocks, you can kind of rock yourself to sleep. I went to college after that in the Midwest, first in St. Louis, and then outside Chicago. I got a bachelor's degree in English literature. And then I received my master's degree in journalism because I wanted to be a, a reporter on a newspaper. And my first job was in Connecticut at the Danbury News Times. I don't know if any of you live in the Danbury area. Anybody live in the Danbury area? Raise your hand. My so, sister-in-law lives in Danbury. Great. We loved it there. I met my wife in Danbury. She's a native of Danbury. I live and, kind of close to the Shelton area, so I'm kind of close to... to Shelton's uh, not far away. That's right. That's right, Allie. And um, so I worked there for five years, and then I worked at 
a boating newspaper in Essex, Connecticut, and we eventually moved to the lower Connecticut River Valley. And uh, I uh, worked there and that's where Ian was born. And he'll talk about that a little bit when he, when he describes his background. Right. And I ended up uh, working eventually at the Hartford Current. And from there, I switched into public relations uh, where you advocate for either a person or a cause, much like what Debbie does for Special Olympics Connecticut. Uh, and I worked, my first job in public relations was with, uh, I was lucky, was with the then governor of the state, Governor Weicker, the former senator. And um, it, it was a great job. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought he was a great guy, fun to work for. Uh, and then he came to me and said, uh, after I, uh, I could use your help, down in New Haven where the Special Olympics World Games is organizing. Uh, this was in 1993, 1994. So he said, I'd like you to handle communications and PR, right? It was eventually that took place in 1995. You're right, Ali. But he, he approached me a couple of years ahead of time because uh, he thought I could benefit. I could be of benefit to uh, the World Games, so I started working there in like February 1994, and I worked there for uh, almost two years, and it really was a phenomenal job. I mean, not, it was just a huge event with multiple venues. You know, I think it was 140 countries that sent athletes. And um, uh, I worked very hard. As a matter of fact, um, by the time the games rolled around uh, in early July 1995, uh, I was getting about four hours sleep a night and I was never home. I was living in a motel in New Haven, which was the host site of the games. And Sharon, my wife, and Ian, who was eight at the time, yep. visited me in the hotel. Otherwise, I wouldn't see them for the length of the, the 10 days of the games. Uh, and uh, so we had dinner together uh, that night at a diner, which one was it? The Athenian in New Haven. That's it's Aria here at that hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it. Uh, 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 I think it was yeah, on, yeah. on Whaley Avenue. I there. believe it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Athenian. And then uh, um, after that position, I went to work for the Native American tribe that owns Foxwoods Resort Casino. Uh, as director of media relations. And um, there, uh, I uh, definitely, uh, it wasn't as busy as the Special Olympics World Games, I can tell you that, but it was, kept me on my toes. Uh, and uh, after that, I worked for a healthcare organization in, uh, in Middletown. And by then, and we were living in the small town of Chester, Connecticut, between Middletown and Old Saybrook, where uh, Ian was born and raised. And uh, yeah, I'll let Ian talk a little bit about himself and his background now. Uh, take it take it away. Okay, so as or like my dad um, said, I was born, raised, and grew up as a kid in my hometown of uh, Chester, Connecticut, in the Lower Kegger River Valley between the hotel and Sarah, because that's where I was born, right? Was, <clears throat> excuse me, and I attended uh, local public schools throughout the time I was in school there. Like, I went to um, Chester Elementary School for elementary school first. Then after that, I went to the job, went for junior high school, middle school, for middle school in Deep River. And then after that, I went to the uh, Valley Regional High School in Deep River also uh, for high school. 
and then I graduated from high school. And after that, I went to college to get like a college education. So first I went to uh, Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island for a couple of years where I was a travel and tourism management major. And then after that, I transferred to um, Free Rivers Community College to finish my college career there, where I was a uh, hospitality management major with a uh, concentration in hotel management. And um, I graduated from there eventually with an associate of science degree or associate's degree in, in hospitality management, the concentration hotel management, so that's with that. And then I started working, while well, I was still being in Connecticut at first, for um, the uh, Four Points by Sheridan uh, Hotel in uh, Meriden, Connecticut, as a dishwasher in the kitchen there. Then I went from that job to also working at the Chester Village West, um, assistant in the building community in my town in Chester as a uh, dishwasher or kitchen utility worker in the kitchen there. And then so, 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 so after a couple of years, of having those two jobs after since I graduated from college a few years ago, like four or five years ago, we uh, left Connecticut to move down to Florida to Clearwater, Florida on the West Gulf Coast near Tampa, where we live now. And since I've been in Clearwater, I've had um, a couple of different jobs before to what I currently have. Like first, I worked for a spring and summer um, at a uh, baseball ballpark in Clearwater, doing working. At as a concession stand runner um, for the spring training baseball games for the Phillies at first, and then for the Clearwater Freshers minor league games, two or four minor league games also. And I did that just for like a year or so, because then after that, I got a new job working at Innisbrook Resort, which is like an upscale golf resort in Palm Harbor, Florida, the Euros. So I worked there as like a kitchen utility worker in the kitchen there for a little over a year. But then I got... Um, um, let go from that job due to uh, COVID or coronavirus. So then after that, I had to figure out a job and then I got another job, which is the job I still currently have since I started that about a year and a half ago in December 2020, working um, as a kitchen utility worker in the kitchen and an assistant in the Livesley. Again, this one is called Regency Oaks, located down here in Clearwater, Florida. So now I work there. So that pretty much summarizes my life in terms of my educational and work background. Yeah. Yeah. One thing uh, that's important to note is that, uh, you know, Ian uh, has a diagnosis of a high functioning person with autism. And that was brought to our attention when he was in a daycare back when he was almost three, I think about three, yeah. yeah. Almost three years old when, right, the, yeah. when the director recommended we get an evaluation of him. And we went to uh, a doctor, a developmental pediatrician, who uh, gave us the diagnosis with a lot of background paperwork. And we immediately enrolled Ian in a pre-kindergarten class at our local school. We were very fortunate that that existed. And he was already plugged in to the local school system at the age of three. And that was a, a big help to his school career. And from then, um, all of us, including, you know, his mom and dad took a big interest in his schooling. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at Ian's room. And let me just add that we watched the uh, Heidi Voigt Zoom interview presentation of with the global ambassadors. And we thought it was great. Was well, great for yeah. And if we do half as well, we'll be very happy with uh, your reception. Um, but we noticed she gave you a little tour of you know her backyard, her chickens, her house. So we thought we'd give you a little tour of Ian's room for a few minutes to uh, show you some of the interesting things that are in there. So just bear with us as we uh, move. Okay. Okay, here we go. So Ian has a few th interesting things on his wall that uh, we'll show you here. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. That right there, We I bought two photos um, as a, a fundraiser for the Special Olympics back when I worked for the World Games. Um, there are two photos of athletes. The first one is of the runner, U.S. Olympic runner, Gwen Torrance, who won a couple of gold medals at a, the Olympic Games in the, in the 1980s. And um, the photograph is by a photographer. Uh, and uh, he's, you know, kind of well known. And uh, I uh, bought this photo and the next one I'll show you um, for uh, what I thought was a modest donation to the cause of the Special Olympics. And the next photo, let's see here. Here it is, is of uh, Jim Kelly, the football player. Let me see, there's a bit of a glare in there. Yeah, Jim Kelly, former quarterback of the Bills, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. former former, Buffalo Bills. Yeah. former yeah. quarterback uh, of the yeah, Buffalo yeah. Bills. Uh, yeah. And he's shown here holding a football in his right hand. And um, he's posing in front of what we're pretty sure is the old War Memorial Stadium in Buffalo, which I have a good friend who grew up in the Buffalo area, and he assures me the nickname of the stadium is the the Rock Pile because it's basically made of crumbling concrete. And uh, some of you might know Jim Kelly as uh, a, a well-known cancer survivor now. And he's been very public about his fight with cancer. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Now down here, let me see. You can get this. Yep. CDs. You can show them like CD collection. Like, it's usually like uh, songs, CDs, or music CDs. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Can you see the CD rack? CD racks? Yeah. Ian's got. I don't know, a couple of hundred CDs. He likes, like that. Yeah, like music. He yeah, likes to yeah, listen yeah, to yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Um, why do you like music? -y? Oh, I like music because it's on uh, because it relaxes me to listen to it, and I'm into um like uh, I would say like uh, you know like rock music, like classic rock and modern rock, and also pop, like classic pop, modern pop. Those are two favorite genres. But I also like uh, some uh, jazz and blues and a little rap and hip hop too. So that's the kind of music <laughs> I'm into. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got well-rounded musical taste. Well, oh, musical taste, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he, he's got some another interesting wall hanging over here on the opposite wall. Um, yeah. Here, framed together, are two photos. One is of the blues musician BB King, and both photos graph. This is BB King over here. He's over oh, yeah, yeah. And he's he's a famous blues musician who came who grew up in Mississippi. And over here is the boxing promoter who promoted lots of boxing matches, including Muhammad Ali's. Uh, he, he also autographed that. And um, I got the photos and the autographs at Foxwoods Resort Casino, where I worked for the Native American tribe. I met the two men, um, and uh, they were very kind to uh, autograph uh, the photos of themselves. The One of B.B. Of King here says, to Sharon and Arthur, because I told them my wife was a big fan, too. And uh, the, the one over here of uh, Don King has him, you know, saluting and holding the American flag. And it says to Arthur, best wishes, Don King. Yes. So uh, uh, he, uh, uh, they both uh, were very nice people. And I wasn't the only one to get autographs, but I, I lined up to get autographs and photos from those two gentlemen. Right. Okay. Now. I'm not going to show you all of Ian's room, but let me just say that he has the neatest room of the three of us. Uh, he, um, uh, in fact, he is so neat 
that Sharon and I have put some of our junk in his room for storage. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, he, uh, oh, this is kind of fun here. Yeah, we're not. Um, let's see if we can show. The, this is his TV, which is uh, mounted on the wall. That was my idea because we needed new TVs. So, so rather than uh, yeah. put it on the cabinet, we mounted it on the wall. So now he lies in bed with his remote control facing the TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's his bookcase. Now, a funny thing about Ian was that in his development as a school child, he learned to read by reading travel books like AAA auto guides and uh, uh, yeah. city guides around the country. It's just, it's just guides so guides all of these yeah. books are travel yeah. guides. Uh, or, and travel books, some of which he inherited from his grandfather, who loved to get AAA travel guides, and some of which we handed it down to him. Right. Yeah. But many he bought himself. The travel books, yeah, I bought himself, but some of them, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like whenever he got a gift certificate to a bookstore, like Barnes and Nobles or borders he would go out and use the gift certificate to buy travel books because he loved to travel and uh we love to travel and uh he's he's constantly to this day reading travel books to uh uh both sharpen his reading skills and just because he enjoys it. Yeah, okay, yep, that's true. Okay, we're gonna consult our notes here after the tour of Ian's room. So it's supposed to be supposed to start our, okay. our favorite experience next time. Okay. Do that for the next, like, All, right. Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna talk about some favorite experiences and uh, we're gonna start out, uh, ask some questions of Ian and um, we'll start on a serious note. Um, when uh, Ian was growing up in uh, Chester, we were very lucky that he uh, attended schools that had a supportive environment for people with disabilities. And uh, he was only bullied once. And that happened out of school, after school, uh, starting from the age of about eight years old, his mom and I would let Ian walk downtown to the village center in Chester. We, we'd live maybe five, seven minute walk from the downtown. And he knew the way. He was he was careful about crossing the streets, and we felt he was old enough. One funny thing that happened the first day that we let him walk downtown, we got calls from neighbors and school teachers leaving school saying, We saw Ian walking downtown alone. Is everything okay? And we said, Yes, don't worry. This we're letting him do this. We think he's gonna be fine, but thank you for calling. But one time, about two years later, Ian got bullied downtown. And I'll, I'll let Ian describe it a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can remember of it, though, because it was like, yeah, so I remember it happened. This must have been when, like, I was in fifth grade and about 11 years old, let's say. And there was this kid who um, was who went to my school, who was in my grade, who was kind of like uh, underprivileged or not really that well off. And he had some kind of a learning disability himself, actually, too. Um, and he uh, once uh, bullied me or picked on me. Um, 
like kind of like, I guess, um, uh, you, you, oh, I guess, like, uh, Flowerfear tried to fight with me and might have called me a name or some names, but I don't remember what the name or names were, though, if he did. Um, and, uh, he <clears throat> sounds like my experience being bullied or picked on once when I was a kid, um, downtown, walking downtown, walking up in Chester in my hometown when that, um, happened. So I, uh, reacted to it okay or fine. Eventually, um, he did, uh, stop bullying me or picking on me. The incident lasted for, like, a little while, maybe. And then after it happened, I remember I went home and told my parents about it. And they actually, I remember, uh, said, well, they gave me the option of, like, having them call his parents to talk about or tell her or tell them about it, I remember. But I said, no, that's fine, all right, you don't have to do that. So we didn't do that. And then we just kind of, I guess I'll let it go from there. And thankfully, like my dad said, it only happened to you. I was a kid once. So that particular incident wasn't really too bad. That was just kind of like one, you know, like negative thing for my childhood that happened to me then when that was, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, as uh, we recalled it, uh, the boy punched Ian somewhere on his body, maybe his shoulder or his chest. And yeah, you might have pinned your punch once. Kind of thinking, yeah, okay, that's every call. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, and yeah. Ian came home crying a little bit, and, he, and then he explained what happened. Uh, and um, we and. Uh, wasn't there another boy with the bully? Yeah, they were together. It was another boy with the bully. They were like, ah, bicycle together or something. I think that's how it happened. Yeah. And it was like the boy with the other, with the other boy or whatever. And it was like him, I remember him, who was, who, 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 who was actually becoming your bully. That's what it was. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we explained that probably the bully wanted to impress on the other boy that he was a tough guy because he wanted the other boy to be his friend because he didn't have many friends. Right, that's true, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but that's a brief explanation of what happened. So the, the point is, is that even in the best of circumstances, you know, bullying can happen even outside of a school environment. So we'll move on to, uh, so we're positive things that I think we yes. should we're talking about. Yeah, okay. More, uh, yeah. more positive, yeah, yeah. fun uh, things. What about some things? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Ian, do you want to talk about some fun things you did growing up? Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that. Actually, I could do that. Uh. Yeah. Some fun things I did College, growing up. So like. Um, well, some of that also some other things too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So growing up, I was uh, lucky and fortunate for all the time I was in school, including everything like high, like elementary school, middle school, high school, and college, to have friends. Um. When I went to like every one of those schools, regional schools. So like, for instance, when I was in elementary school, starting there. I had friends who would invite me to like their birthday parties and stuff. So I would go to those and I, and I would invite my friends or saw them to attend my birthday parties every year for all the time. I was in elementary school too. So that was um, a lot of fun. And I had um, like, you know, other friends and family grew up for like my parents and people like that, who I got to, uh, you know, be with and socialize with on um, the times like family wise I have, or, or, or I have like, like, you know, uh, cousins, aunts, and uncles. Like, I have an only child. You know, I'm an only child, so I have any brothers or sisters. I have, like, cousins, aunts, and uncles. And I had grandparents, although they both died or passed away now. Um, and I would do, you know, fun things and fun activities uh, with them sometimes. For all the time I was a kid and with my grandparents uh, when they were alive and that kind of thing. Um, and um, then, so, 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 so I was, like, starting. You know, very school. I would say when I was when I was a kid when I was little, and then in middle school and high school, 
I had friends who I would sometimes or occasionally socialize with or do things with out of school who I met in school, like uh, that kind of uh, thing. Um, and then when I got to uh, college, like at JU Providence, I met uh, new people or new friends, like again or once again there, who I got to know, who I got to socialize with and do things with um, inside and outside of college. Like, like I don't know if the social things when we went to school together there. So our college share there, so there was some of that. Also, actually, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, it was a big step for Ian to go away to college in Providence, Rhode Island. And um, his, his mom and I were worried about how he would adjust to the social life, and to the academic life. And uh, turned out Ian had a great time socially, but struggled with his academics, even though he was a good student in high school. So uh, he uh, would, um, he made a lot of friends. His Facebook account exploded <laughs> with uh, the number of people. Um, between high school and college, he must have, I don't know if this is a lot, but 800 friends. Yeah, I have like actually well, 700 or something friends altogether. Total on Facebook is what I have on Facebook. I'll buy social media on Facebook there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, and not that he talks to them all the time or anything, but. Well, I, don't I don't talk to regularly, but so do I do. So I don't think I think I have a lot of people on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he uh, uh, went. He walked around the city. He didn't have a car, but Providence is a very walkable city. It is, yeah. And uh, sampled some of the inexpensive cuisine, the food, and he uh, uh, really enjoyed himself, but his grades suffered. So he transferred to Three Rivers Community College in Connecticut in Norwich. Where my grades improved, and which I graduated after taking classes there, so I was good. Then, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he, Ian mentioned earlier about working some jobs in Connecticut, and then we decided to make the big move to Florida, uh, and um, and that was uh, we had to do some serious work packing up our house and getting rid of all the stuff we didn't need in Florida. In fact, we pulled up one of those big garbage dumpsters at the top of our driveway and just filled it up with all kinds of stuff we weren't going to need that we were throwing out. Um, and we, we were mostly happy to do it. Although, uh, uh, Toward the end, we hardly had room to fit things, just little things that we pop in. Um, and uh, then after a week, you know, this garbage flatbed came up and took the dumpster away. And we were a lot lighter with our household junk. Yep. So when we were ready, we had movers to come, you know, to help pack us up. And we sold the house in Chester and we took a trip. We loaded up one of our cars and uh, started driving south. And we decided rather than drive straight through whatever 15, 20 hours, we were going to take our time and take it slow. So we stopped along the way many times to visit relatives and stay overnight with them and then we would stay overnight in cities that we had never seen before like what city so like we stopped in let's see like along the way from Connecticut to Florida we would stop in like Myrtle Beach South Carolina for a couple of nights then Charleston South Carolina for a couple of nights for like a night or two or something and then Savannah Georgia for a night and uh, Jacksonville Florida for a night so we saw a lot of the suburb cities that we hadn't seen before in particular on the drive down from Connecticut to Florida and then we uh, and then after Jacksonville we just drove the rest of the way uh, down to um, Orlando then we spent like um, about a uh, month or 
Civil War in Orlando, uh, staying at a couple of different uh, resorts there. Um, well, we looked for a new condo unit that we eventually bought or purchased in Clearwater near Tampa. So once we bought that, we were able to move into there. And that's where we're what we call our home now. We're with now our condo unit in Clearwater, Florida. So like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, we used Orlando as our base. We would drive the hour and a half or so to Clearwater to look for a condo with a real estate agent. And, you know, we did that a few times until we found something we liked. And then we would drive back to Orlando to the resort where we were staying. And so that was fun. Um, we didn't spend too much time at Disney during that month. No, we didn't at all, actually. No, because we've been to Disney before on our previous occasions of trips. Yeah. yeah we, had been to, we had been to Disney a few times before. So we, we had plenty of Disney <laughs> travel in our background. So we didn't have to add to it. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So on that trip south from Connecticut to Florida, what were some of your favorite places to stop or eat? I would say I enjoyed, well, I enjoyed the restaurants or the food or cuisine in Myrtle Beach and in Charleston and Savannah in particular, like those historic cities. We, we, we did some sightseeing in the round. Charleston and Savannah, especially those cities were historic cities. They were two of my favorites. This the this general cities, like the historic buildings and houses I saw or toured there and getting to see up the local cuisine at the restaurants or so the restaurants there in those two cities like in Savannah and Charleston was fun and good some system good tasty food also so we liked that we're, we're kind of like you know foodies like to see up the local cuisine in places where we travel so that was actually fun too yeah uh, yeah yeah so and now um here in Clearwater in the Tampa Bay area uh Ian works five days a week he's full-time at his job which he enjoys a lot and uh i'm uh, still doing some writing which i like a lot too and um and we're just uh enjoying what is usually nice florida weather uh and we like the lifestyle palm trees and all that and uh uh, and we're happy we made the move, although we miss, you know, family and friends from the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's really it. We'll take your questions now. I hope we, we yes, please, we can take some questions. Oh, good. Yeah. Beautiful right. story. <laughs> I know that there's been some questions coming through in the chat. Kimberly, yeah. do you yeah. want to ask one of your questions or you want me to read one? Um, yes. Sure. So, so yeah. So, who inspired you to become a journalist? Say that again, Kim. Um, who inspired you to become a journalist? How did I become, or who? Who inspired you? Who inspired me? Who inspired me? Well, inspired that's a great yeah, question, yeah. Kimberly. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for asking it. Uh, when I was young uh, and more uh, impressionable by heroes, I, I um, really liked the reporters on the New York Times and the Washington Post, the big newspapers that are still fairly popular today. Um, and they've actually succeeded. How did you get in and expanding print editions yeah. into electronic editions. So, but the reporting, the writers, were well, what really impressed me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kimberly. You're okay. Let's go over to Ashley next. She's had her hand up and typed a question in the chat. Go ahead, Ashley. Wow. She's still on mute. Um, Anne, I have to give you proper credit for being so brave and you were bullied and telling your parents because when I was in eighth grade, I got bullied pretty bad and I know how it feels. So I give you proper credit and I give you the courage to help anyone who is bullied in your area because if they're being bullied and if someone's helping them, something bad could happen. 
So I'm very proud of you for being brave. And I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite thing to do with your parents when you were little? Okay, so favorite thing to do with my parents when I was little. So I'm trying to remember, well, I think when I was little, um, interestingly enough, some of my favorite things to do with my parents are, are actually still some of the things I like to do with them now. Like when I was little, I can remember um, even then I like to um, like uh, go out to eat with them at restaurants to sample a lot of food or cuisine. And even then I also liked to um, like travel with them or take vacations to an exciting place whenever I could. So when I was little with my parents, I, 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 I really like to do um, like uh, some of or, or, or a lot of the same things then I would say that I like to do with them even now as an adult too. Yeah. 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 And thank you for your compliment. Thank actually. you for your compliment. Yeah. 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 Excellent. There's a lot of hands up, so we're going to keep going. Um, how, how about I'm um, hopping over to Aaron next. Aaron, what's your question? Well, I'm going to mostly say between Ian and um, and the person right next right next to him. I'm going to tell you, you guys did a very phenomenal job by raising Ian, and I know it was hard for him to be in the bully situation because all of us on this screen were all bullied, and you know, you, he inspired us by reading maps and understanding exactly what's going on and learning to move from different states to different countries and understand exactly that, you know, me and his relatives and friends and family and everything else. So second thing I'm going to say is, is that um, Ian, don't let no one else tell you exactly that you're, that that you have autism and everything also, or have with uh, a person with a disability, you are a person with with a lot of charisma, spunk, and a, and a, and, a, and a full and full surprises. Because with us as Special Olympics team and Global Messengers, we inspire you though by you doing what you have to do. Because those people, that one bully. Because I'll tell you, because if I was in your shoes and I saw that person and that person was bullying you, believe me, you have a big brother like myself to mostly protect you and making sure that nothing happens to you. Believe me on that. All right. yeah, that's be good. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, we should hear that for you. Thank and you. I'm not, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say real quick with the um the the announcer who was just uh, talking about five minutes ago. You guys. You guys did a good job. I know he loves his music, though, because we all love music and everything else. So, I mean, I'm also yeah. a DJ myself. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. I, I, love, I love music. That's the, be that's the best part, though. All right. So I, I'm just going to tell you, hey, keep up the good work. Do what you need to do. Don't let no one else get to you and everything else. So, and you'll do just fine. You have any questions or any problems or anything else. So you come to us, though, and we will help you. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. That's cool. great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. Yeah. We're going to hop over to Dan Whiting next. Go ahead with your question. I got a question, both. On the Ian's travel books, what is Ian's favorite country? Country I have a travel to, I would say probably Italy. I have a couple of European foreign country travel books. I have an Ireland one and Italy one, but I would say my four words. Italy one is probably my favorite of the foreign country travel books that I have. Yeah. 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 It's uh it's a Fromer book, which is a famous uh travel title about Italy. So he has a few Fromer books and uh a few books about foreign countries and uh, Italy is his favorite. Yeah, I'll was, keep thinking. Yep. I was right there in Italy, Italy for two weeks. You were in Italy nice for two country. Weeks? You were. Okay, that's a beautiful country. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, I've never been to Italy, but you, you've been there. So that's good. All right, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. All awesome. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank, okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. All right. Excellent. I see a lot of hands. We'll get to everybody. Don't worry. Let's hop over to Allie next. Go ahead, Allie. Okay, I got two questions. Um, 
Ian, since you've been bullied a, a lot, did you find a way to deal with your bullyism without people picking on you? Yeah, I just, uh, well, it's really happened to me a lot. Actually, it happened um, like on one occasion when I was a kid in elementary school, but I found, uh, but, 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 but generally I was, I was pretty lucky. I wasn't really bullied that much or that often, actually. Mm -hmm. So while I actually did handle or take care of it, I'm like pretty good or pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I'm dealing with the same problem with uh, one of the global messengers, but I'm not mentioning any names. Okay, yeah, Allie, thanks. Thank you, Allie. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's see. Justin's got his hand up. Go ahead, Justin. Right. So, Ian, I know you said some of your favorite genres, but uh, what are some of your favorite bands? Favorite bands, or right, we could talk about that. So, in terms of uh, classic rock and pop, I mean, I do like, uh, in particular, 60s and 70s rock. Like, I like. Uh, the Beatles and the Beach Boys and the Rolling Stones and the Doors and I like uh, Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and um, <laughs> and I like um, Eric Clapton and Billy Joel and Elton John too. Uh, so those are uh, some of my favorites for my favorite genres like a rock and pop and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, Ian, do you like uh, Bon Jovi? Uh, yes, uh, that's oh, cool. I'm, 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 I'm I do like Bon Jovi, oh, yes, I like uh, John Bon Jovi and his music, or his songs also, well. yes, I do, yeah, yep, yeah. Wow, wait till yep. I tell my friend that, yeah, yeah. I like wow. you. <laughs> Great, thanks, thanks, Justin, thanks, Allie. Alicia, I think I see your hand up there at the bottom. Yes, of the I did, yes, I did. <laughs> what, what, why is this, why is it, okay, what do you do for me, like, in, like, in a, like, uh, for instance, playing games, playing the housework, or, or having, or having fun. So I didn't really hear that that well. What was what were you saying? You're asking. Okay, yeah. Let me okay. Let me say again. What 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 do you do for a living? Uh, what part of Florida do we live in? And do I like country music? Um, yeah. No, uh, no, no. I, I said, why are you asking what you do for a living? Like what things you like? Oh, okay. What I do for a living or what I do for work? Yeah. So currently I work at an independent and assisted living facility called Regency Oaks in Clearwater, Florida as a kitchen utility worker where I wash and boil dishes and do cleaning and do car garbage and cardboard, like that kind of oh. stuff for them, like, like cleaning kitchen or in kitchens so that's what i uh do um for uh work yeah uh, yeah currently anyway for her job yeah yeah Ooh, Ian, i also work in a nursing home too oh you do oh, oh, I'm you go. yeah yeah all cool. right yeah okay yeah, that's good yeah all right mm -hmm. i i i i think i did it i did it in the home too but that i get through school but then when i graduated from high school and i got me a job from uh, I work at New uh, Britain CCSU that I get that I get that part time. Good. So you have a job or a part of job where you work. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Great. All right. Yeah. How you going? Huh? All right. Excellent. That's Thank good. You. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Albert, did you have that? Were you raising your hand? Okay. I think you're on mute. Unmute yourself there, Albert. We'd love to hear your question. He's, yeah, he's still he's still on mute though. Yep. Hit the little microphone in the corner of your screen there, Albert. We can't hear you. There's one right there. Just hit it. Yeah, I can't hear no him either. There, I think he's getting some. There, there you go. go. Okay. Okay. We hear Ian. you now. Ian, what is your favorite TV shows and movies? Movies, yeah, we were really covered our time about that, so I get into that. Um, so in terms of uh movies, I like um like some comedies for a genre of uh, a movie, <laughs> like some romantic comedies and some other comedies that I also like, um, like uh, you know, like dramas and action movies, I would say too. Um, so uh, um, yeah, name a couple, okay, yeah. So, uh, as far as uh, comedies go, I mean, I like um, Anchorman with Will Ferrell, that's a favorite comedy comedy of mine um, and I like um and let's see what else do I like I also like um like uh 
show you some ones I that, that I got to. Yeah, and I also liked The Hangover too. I liked Anchorman. I liked The Hangover with Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. And that um yes those are a couple of my favorite uh movies in particular and as far as favorite tv shows go i like well, on tv i'll watch you know like sports or sporting events like games and baseball basketball football and hockey and i'll watch mm-hmm. some like, political mm-hmm. cable shows also but one of my favorite uh, t- but a couple of my favorite uh tv sitcoms of all time include um i like or liked uh seinfeld and i also like or liked uh everybody loves raymond and king of queen too so uh yeah <laughs> yeah excellent great answers i think nick <laughs> left, the, left the call but he wanted to know if you liked country music too uh, I no, I'm not sure. Two and two are wild and crazy. Well, music. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Be honest. Yeah, okay. Bobby yeah. had written a question in the chat, and then we'll get to John. But Bobby wants to know. Bobby, raise your hand. Where are you? There you are. Bobby wanted to know what is your favorite sport to watch on TV. Uh, my number one favorite sport to watch on TV is football, including both NFL and pro football and uh, college football. And then my second favorite, I would say, is baseball. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're good. Thanks. John, is that for you? Because I think this was so I have that in common. Oh, you had that comment too? Yeah. I'm in this for a bit time. I may be a female, but I do love my sports. That's good. You do your sports. That's good. Nice to hear that. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Arthur, I forgot to ask. Um, since you do journalism, what are some of the topics that you write about? Um, well, thanks, Allie, for asking. You're welcome. Lately, lately, I've been writing about Ian and me uh-huh. and our father-son relationship with him. Uh, being on the uh, autism spectrum. So I've written a few blog posts for this uh, nonprofit called Organization for Autism Research, which has headquarters in Virginia near Washington, D.C. And uh, so I've published two blogs with them, with Ian's help, and a third one is coming out in August. Oh, because oh. if you have any copies, I'd love to read one. Uh, maybe I can get your email from uh, the Special Olympics Connecticut. Okay. And get, send it to me Ooh. if that's yeah. okay. Because when you mentioned a Weiger, I, I kind of know him too. Who's that? Paul Weiger. Because oh, you mentioned White. him, yes. I, I know him too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad uh, used to know him at parties and stuff. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Governor Weicker is still alive. He lives in Southeast Connecticut. Yeah. And he still has his son, doesn't he? He has a son who's a Special Olympics athlete. Okay, yeah. Nice. I think I know him nice. too. Yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah. thanks, Allie. Um, Jen a- entered a question into the chat, and I think it's a really important and good one. Um, Jen, where's Jen? Yeah, so Jen wanted to know, how did you get health insurance for Ian in Florida? Well, I have a good health insurance plan that I'm on. It's called Am Better from Sunshine Health. And it's like, and the way it works is you, is you pay like um, a little bit or a moderate amount of money per month, like for a monthly premium or monthly payment to be on it. Um, but it's a group of other great benefits like uh, prescription drugs for zero cost for free. And it also includes like, uh, uh, yeah. like regular doctor's visits um, for zero cost or for free and even for special services, the prices there is a cost for that, but it's like reasonable well, stuff like that though right it's, yeah, uh, yeah 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 yeah. Uh, yeah yeah ian's on the obamacare network i am yeah oh, okay okay so uh you know the uh so he registered with them you have to do it every year and he, he select a plan and it's a pretty good plan we're happy with it probably that's true yep yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a good question jen yeah. uh, thank yeah. you yeah. 
John, I think you had your hand up. Would you like to ask a question, John Valentine? Oh, oh yeah. Um, Ian, did did you um like do any sports like when um like take your mind off the bullying whenever? Uh, did you like do any sports like? Okay. Like, step away from that and then do some sports like track or anything. So I was uh, uh, very athletic for all the time I was in I school. I when I was in elementary school, starting there, I briefly played soccer for Facebook a little while. Nice. And I briefly played uh, basketball for a little while. Very and then cool. in middle school, I did no sports. But then in high school, I didn't do any athletic sports or ball sports, but I did hope to participate in my high school's uh, 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 high school bowl team, which nice. was a uh, varsity sport. It was like a varsity uh, trivia question club sport where you would get asked uh, trivia questions and compete against and, and compete against other schools, high school bowl teams, and doing it. answers. You could like uh, answer them and stuff. So I did that, and I also did uh, Boy Scouts for all the time. I was like, cool. Like, that was awesome. That was cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was our school then, and she was my school. Boy Scouts to into that for some years, making it all the way up to the rank or ranking of life in Boy nice. Scouts or the rank of Eagle or yeah. the last rank of Boy Scouts. Those are some of the things I did for extra career characters when I was a kid. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So in Boy Scouts, Ian did a lot of hiking and camping. Hiking, nice. camp, summer camp, winter and fall, spring camp, outside kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you ever did you ever be an Eagle Scout? Uh, no, I didn't make it that high. No, I was you never made it that high. Or lower, um, or, or the now or below that, I made it up to the rank of life mm. in Boy Scouts, nice. which is the second highest rank, or rank below Eagle, but I never made a T Eagle. I was like um, a couple or a few merit badges and an Eagle project for of Eagle, so I didn't make it up to Eagle. Those stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. Very uh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. That's cool. I just made it up to Weeblow. I was a Weeblo, and that's, that's and, cool. and, and, yeah, and I, I, I've never gotten a Boy Scouts, but I, I've just um got up to Weeblo, and uh, Weeblo's, yeah, it was the last, yeah, but but I I I really didn't want to camp, and you know, so I just uh I just let it go, so um, <laughs> I I didn't become a Boy Scout, so mm. but I was a Weeblo, but. Very, okay. very cool. Thank you. Yeah, our very cool. Time. Very nice. You guys aren't going to believe this. Okay. It's almost five o'clock already. It's <laughs> very, very the cool. fastest oh, hour oh, ever. Very cool. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. So I think we just, if anybody has any questions or want to be, be in touch with uh, Arthur and Ian, um, thank you, Ian. Send me an email and, you know, I can okay. put you in touch with them. Um, what a great conversation. What a great presentation. It was wonderful to hear about um, Arthur and, and Ian and all the great things they've done and that they're doing um, the writing and the working and everything. And I'm just really thrilled to have you both here um, and spending the time with us this afternoon. We'd love for you to come back sometime and talk to us again. Um, but thank you everybody for being on the call. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, again, if you have any questions or any messages to get the Arthur and Ian, I'm happy to forward them on. So just send them to me and I'll send them to you. Yeah, can I say one? So one? Much. I, I know there's a, a lot of people. We try to keep it to um to an hour. So if you have any additional questions, why don't you send them to me, and I'll be happy to pass them on to the to and our. Just let like, you know, I think I knew. Well, I know we could probably keep it for about. another hour if we wanted to. <laughs> but I know Arthur, I kind of remember you from back in '95 because I think that's when I first met you. All right. So thank that's, you, everybody. So much yeah. for your okay. time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much. Everybody's good. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, see you Sunday, Dad. See you Sunday. See you Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you Sunday. Bye. 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 Bye.